Longitude, the true story of a lone genius who solved the greatest scientific problem of his time is a best-selling book by Darva Sobel about John Harrison, an 18th-century clockmaker who created the first clock sufficiently accurate to be used to determine longitude at sea, an important development in navigation. The book was made into a television series entitled Longitude. In 1998, the illustrated Longitude was published, supplementing the earlier text with 180 images of characters, events, instruments, maps and publications. Problem of Longitude Determining longitude on land was fairly easy compared to the task at sea. A stable surface to work from, a comfortable location to live in while performing the work and the ability to repeat determinations over time made for great accuracy. Whatever could be discovered from solving the problem at sea would only improve the determination of longitude on land. Determining latitude was relatively easy in that it could be found from the altitude of the sun at noon with the aid of a table giving the sun's declination for the day. For longitude, early ocean navigators had to rely on dead reckoning. This was inaccurate on long voyages out of sight of land and these voyages sometimes ended in tragedy as a result. In order to avoid problems with not knowing one's position accurately, navigators have, where possible, relied on taking advantage of the knowledge of latitude. They would sail to the latitude of their destination, turn toward the destination and follow a line of constant latitude. This was known as running down a westing. This prevented a ship from taking the most direct route or a route with the most favorable winds and currents, extending the voyage by days or even weeks. This increased the likelihood of short rations, scurvy as star leading to poor health or even death for members of the crew and resultant risk to the ship. Errors in navigation have also resulted in shipwrecks, motivated by a number of maritime disasters attributable to serious errors in reckoning position at sea, particularly spectacular disasters such as the Scilly Naval Disaster of 1707 which took Admiral Sir Cloudsley Shovel and his fleet. The British government established the Board of Longitude in 1714. The discovery of the longitude is of such consequence to Great Britain for the safety of the navy and merchant ships as well as for the improvement of trade that for want thereof many ships have been retarded in the voyages, and many lost, and announced the longitude prize for such person or persons as shall discover the longitude. The prizes were to be awarded to the first person to demonstrate a practical method for determining the longitude of a ship at sea. Each prize, in increasing amounts, was for solutions of increasing accuracy. These prizes, worth millions of dollars in today's currency, motivated many to search for a solution. Britain was not alone in the desire to solve the problem. France's King Louis XIV founded the Académie Royale des Sciences in 1666. It was charged with, among a range of scientific activities, the improvement of maps and sailing charts and advancement of the science of navigation. From 1715, the Academy offered one of the two pre years specifically for navigation. Spain's Philip II offered a prize for the discovery of a solution to the problem of the longitude in 1567. Philip III increased the prize in 1598. Holland added to the effort with a prize offered in 1636. Navigators and scientists in most European countries were aware of the problem and were involved in finding the solution. Due to the international effort in solving the problem and the scale of the enterprise, it represents one of the largest scientific endeavors in history. Knowing longitude, as Darva Sobel explains, to know one's longitude at sea, one needs to know what time it is aboard ship and also the time at the home port or another place of known longitude at that very same moment. 
The two clock times enabled the navigator to convert the hour difference into geographical separation. Since the Earth takes 24 hours to revolve 360 degrees, one hour marks one twenty-fourth of a revolution of 15 degrees, and so each hour's time difference between the ship and starting point marks a progress of 15 degrees of longitude to the east or west. Every day at sea, when the navigator resets his ship's clock to local noon when the sun reaches its highest point in the sky, and then consults the home port clock, every hour's discrepancy between them translates into another 15 degrees of longitude. One degree of longitude equals four minutes of time the world over, although in terms of distance, one degree shrinks from 60.15 nautical miles or 111 kilometers, to virtually nothing at the poles. Precise knowledge of the hour in two different places at once, a longitude prerequisite so easily accessible today from any pair of cheap wristwatches was utterly unattainable up to and including the era of pendulum clocks. On the deck of a rolling ship such clocks would slow down, or speed up, or stop running altogether. Normal changes of temperature encountered en route from a cold country of origin to a tropical trade zone thinned a thickened clocks lubricating. Oil and made its metal parts expand or contract with the equally disastrous results. A rise or fall in barometer pressure, or the subtle variations in the Earth's gravity from one latitude to another, could also cause a clock to gain or lose time. Before the 18th century ocean navigators could not find an accurate way of determining longitude. This failure caused ships to miss the destination, many times crashing into rocks and killing the crews. A practical solution came from a gifted carpenter, John Harrison, who solved one of the most difficult problems of his time by creating an accurate chronometer. The best scientists of the time, including Isaac Newton, thought it impossible. Harrison spent four decades perfecting a watch that would earn him compensation from Parliament thanks to the recognition and influence of King George III of England. Recognition. British Book of the Year, 1997. Modern Library 100 Best Non-Fiction Readers List. American Academy of Arts and Letters Harold D. Vorsell Memorial Award, 1999. Le Prix Faubert du Coton. Il Premio del Mare Sir Keo. Royal Society Prizes for Science Books, 1997. American Library Association Non-Fiction Outstanding Books for the College Bound and Lifelong Learners, 1999. American Library Association Outstanding Books for the College Bound and Lifelong Learners, Science and Technology, 2004. In recognition of longitude Sobel was named a Fellow of the American Geographical Society. Film Adaptations Nova Online Lost at Sea The Search for Longitude Longitude